Hey there, Compassion. Thanks for joining us for Conversations of Compassion. I'm here with Pastor Mike, and uh, we're going to dive into the story of um, Jesus tempting again. Um, if you haven't joined us, we're, or if you haven't joined us before, we're in the story of Jesus in the wilderness. Um, following his baptism, he goes into the wilderness to be tempted. And uh, so I thought we would discuss that a little bit today. Um, Again, thanks for joining us. Here we go. That's great. Well, let's go to Matthew chapter four. And real quick, just the reason we're doing it is we want to start the conversation early. Uh, we're challenged this year to become people of the text, people of the scriptures. And so what we're doing here and, and in the space that we're inviting you into to open up the scriptures apart from Sunday morning is just like rehearsal. It's like we want to open the Bible more and more and more together as a people. Uh, we are trusting that you can open the scriptures and read them all you want at home. Um, but there's something about opening and reading together and uh, learning together. It's like a communal activity that we're doing that we're initiating today. And then you'll get to join the conversation on Sunday. So let's go to Matthew chapter four. We'll start in verse one. Then Jesus was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. We're going to talk a little bit about that um, hunger in bread, that first test. And uh, there's a lot to all of these testings. But the very first thing that the enemy comes to him and tests him in and tempts him with is the appetites of being human, the appetites of his humanity. Um, he's just heard from his father, from God almighty maker of heaven and earth. The waters opened up. Remember we, we went over this last week. He's just heard from him. You are my son. You are the son of God and I love you and I'm well pleased with you. That's what he's just listened to. And then he's driven into the wilderness by the Holy spirit. And then the enemy picks up on that theme. And if you are the son of God. It's almost like I could put parentheses around that and hear the enemy saying, um, if you are the son of God, and I doubt it because you're mm. hungry, because you're sweaty and you're dirty and um, you're tired. So if you're the son of God, hmm. then go ahead and, and turn these stones into bread. He's playing on Jesus's feeling of humanness, mm. of being human. And he's saying out of that, go ahead and, and, and deny your identity as son of God and just listen to me and be less than that. Be less than that. And um, so now we pick up this theme of what it means that maybe uh, we're told here in all the accounts of Jesus being in the wilderness after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, everyone tells us that he was hungry. And I'm, I'm just curious, uh, if I'm reading a book and someone says that someone didn't eat for 40 days, I don't need them to then tell me <laughs> that they were hungry. Like them being hungry is a given to me. So I'm wondering why are we told in the text again and again, that after these 40 days of not eating a thing, Jesus is hungry. Yeah, it, yeah. it'd be easy just to breeze over that, right? Like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, you fasted for 40 days. But yeah, you're hungry. He's hungry. <laughs> and often I do breeze over things like that, but I think it, it shows the humanness of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, the He had to submit to a human body, a, a container that had need mm -hmm. and just like you and I need to eat every day, um, Jesus needed to eat. And so I think, yeah, we could breeze over that, but that phrase kind of has some warning lights or not, maybe not warning lights, but Hey, pay attention. Pay attention. Yeah. Jesus is fully God. Yes. We believe that. And we believe that he is fully human. I love fully it. Fully God, fully human. The text doesn't let us let go of either one of those. Mm -mm. Like he is fully God. 
Uh, we're just affirmed that. Mm -hmm. But the scriptures don't let us let go of his humanness throughout the whole story. Uh, they're like, yes, and he's human. Human. Yeah. hundred percent human. Yeah. Totally human. Yeah. It's kind of like a, a left hand, right hand thing, right? Mm -hmm. We just heard Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit landed on, on him. And this is my son whom I love and I'm human. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's like a balance that we can look at the full picture of Jesus, godness and mm -hmm. humanity. Right. I like that the text <clears throat> refuses to let me lift Jesus off the earth and put him in some kind of ethereal, well, he's not really like me. Uh, he's, and the fact that he is like me with needs like I have um, actually invites me closer to him. Like I can... Mm maybe identify with him a little bit more because he's identified with me a little bit more. And I uh, will go into that a little bit more on Sunday morning. Um, but the very first thing that, that comes to mind hearing that he's hungry and that he has need, the son of God is in need in this moment. Hmm. Um, and it's not foreign to him. Like when, remember, maybe we can remember that Jesus was born and born in a manger <laughs> And he needed his mother to clean him up mm. and to feed him and to burp him. He was, he was a God in need. And I know that phrase is, is, uh, uh, it comes at our ears wrong. Yeah. Because I don't want to say God needs anything, but Jesus, as he, even though he was, uh, we had, kind of talked before this and you brought up the Philippians two passage, yeah. like even though Jesus was the very nature of God, didn't consider equality with God, something to hold on to, but he just let it go and became nothing, became nothing. He, he humbled himself to take on that container of need. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I think that's the greatest act of humility of, you know, the creator of, of the world, mm -hmm. the universe said, I'm going to be in need. I'm going to come and be with my people mm -hmm. um, in their very form, human. Mm -hmm. I know. That, it's that beautiful. should blow your mind, right? It's beautiful. Um, and I think for me, when I hear Jesus in need, and we're using this language, Jesus in need, based on he was hungry. Right, right. He needed food. And that we can't argue that. We can't argue that, oh, he didn't really need food because he was absolutely human. And human bodies can't survive without food for much longer than he went. <laughs> yeah. That's about as long as you can go <clears throat> without food. And he was needing food at that moment. Um, he was a, a man in need. And I think sometimes when we have needs in our lives, uh, when something's revealed to us that I, that I need God in a certain area... Um, I start to think a couple of things about myself. Either mm -hmm. um, I, I'm really wrong. Mm -hmm. I did something wrong to put myself in this position of need. Um, or God didn't pay attention to me close enough. And so now I'm in need because I've been forgotten and not seen and um, not known. And so when Jesus is hungry, um, he I don't think, I don't know what's in his his mind, but in my mind... I would be, boy, what did I do to get here? Oh, uh, yeah. But we're told that he was driven by the Holy Spirit. God led him there. His need did not mean that he was outside of the will of God. He was exactly, Fully with it. Yeah. exactly yeah. where and when and doing what God wanted him to do. And it led him to need. And I feel like sometimes we start to think, well, am I outside of God's will if I'm in mm. such a big need right now? And need doesn't mean you're you're outside of God's will. It might mean that you're right where God wants you to be, right exactly smack dab in the middle of where God wants you. Um, Wilderness and, and need is quite uncomfortable for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I think even um, in our culture, we're we're driven by immediate gratification, like mm -hmm. or ignore your needs. You know, like okay, I'm hungry. Let me eat now. We have food. Mm -hmm. You can get food delivered to you. Right. You know. Right. Um, but I think there's great humility in need as well to admit need. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm great at admitting my need, <laughs> <laughs> note the sarcasm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that's, that's really neat about this story uh, is the author brought to life Jesus need, you know, mm -hmm. there's another act of humility mm -hmm. 
um, by Jesus. Yep. And that's where our enemy came Mm -hmm. right at that point of need, uh, to, to begin to offer him lies in his deepest need. And I think that's where the enemy works for us. So we have a choice here and that's where the testing comes. Are we going to love God in our need or are we going to take shortcuts and take our need into our own hands and say, well, I'm, I can do it. I'm going to, I'm just going to muscle through this. I'll get through it. Um, probably more often than not, the temptation that we have to, to answer, become the answer to our own mm-hmm. need. Um, I think we often fall to that. I often fall to that. Yeah. Think that it's in my own power, in my own hands. And you notice what the enemy did. He came and he questioned his identity in the moment of need. And then he offered him a solution to his need that he could do. He said, right. look, you could do this if you wanted to, but it wasn't just a, um, you do this. It was a command. If you are the son of God, do this. It's like, a in one little turn of events, like if Jesus listened to the, com- obeyed the enemy, he's like in one little moment on this trajectory of who he is and in his vocation in the world. And the enemy says, now obey me. And if he shifted just a bit, that trajectory sends him to where now he is owned and enslaved by the enemy. And I feel like this is what our enemy does in our moment of need. He questions our identity. He questions our belovedness. And he offers us a solution that makes us more his Mm. than God's. That's what's presented to Jesus. And an attractive solution too. Oh, yeah. I'll bet Jesus could have made some good bread. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Some good bread, not just bad bread. Remember the wine? It was like the best wine they ever had. <laughs> yeah. And if I had that power, <laughs> I'd never be hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I think, too, um, the response of Jesus is pretty incredible mm-hmm. as well. And, you know, he didn't argue. He didn't, like, it wasn't like he was on trial. He just quoted the word of God. Mm-hmm. Um, he just went to the source. It's not like he had to... Um, fumble and fight and, and, you know, he, he just said, this is the word of God. It's written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Um, And he's quoting Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Yep. And we'll get into that Sunday um, because I think this is what Jesus does. It's brilliant. He contextualizes testing in the life of Israel, in the story, in the story that he's in. He recognizes uh, the testing and he puts it in its proper place in order for him to respond rightly out of that. And I think we'll talk more about that on Sunday, uh, how Jesus's response to this testing Mm -hmm. reveals how he's understanding it and maybe even how he can respond to it the way that he does. And so we can enter in and understand our testing in the same way that Jesus understood it and respond with the same power and uh, the same um, resistance to our enemy Mm. and with the same victory that Jesus responds with. That's awesome. Isn't the Bible amazing? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. In just a few short verses, we can explore such a depth in, in humanity and the divine and, um, such a beautiful experience to, to talk about it together. Um, so thank you for joining us. Mm-hmm. We're, we're grateful. Um, maybe we can close by uh, praying the Shema together. That'd be great. Um, Hear, Hear, O Israel, Israel the, the Lord, Lord our God, God the, the Lord, Lord is one. one. Love, Love the Lord, Lord your God, God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. strength. And love your neighbor Neighbor as as yourself, yourself. as Jesus added to the Shema. Love your neighbor. All right. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. 